Hello and welcome to a session of quadrilaterals and polygons. Now what is a polygon? Now a polygon is a closed area between a set of straight lines. Now what is the minimum number of lines required to make a polygon? 1, no. 2, will only make an angle. 3 is the minimum number of sides possible. So a three-sided polygon is nothing but a triangle. Similarly, a four-sided one is nothing but a quadrilateral. Of course, we have many more names for quadrilaterals. We shall discuss them. A five-sided one is a pentagon. A six-sided one is a hexagon and so on. So a quadrilateral or a polygon can have n number of sides. Let's have a look at what are the types of polygon. Now there's something called a convex polygon where all the angles or rather all the interior angles of the polygon is less than 180 degrees. Now normally polygons say triangle, a triangle wherein the sum of the three sides is 180 degrees. None of them can be more than 180. So it's a convex polygon. A quadrilateral. Now quadrilateral, what is the total number of angles or rather the total degrees possible across the four sides, four angles? It is nothing but n minus 2. So n is the number of sides which is 4. So 4 minus 2 into 180. So total of all the angles will be 360. Hence it is possible to have a greater than 180 degree. So a greater than 180 degree is called a concave polygon. A less than 180 degree is called a convex polygon. So if any one angle is more than 180, it is called a con concave polygon. Whereas if all the angles are less than 180, it's called a convex polygon. Now there is something called a regular polygon. A regular polygon is nothing but which is ideal or I would say where all the sides are equal, all the angles are equal. Now this in case of a triangle is called an equilateral triangle. In case of a quadrilateral is called a square. Thereafter, all the sides and all the angles equal is called a regular polygon. So it can be regular pentagon, regular hexagon, regular octagon and so on. Now let's have a look at some properties of a polygon. Now what is an interior angle? As we just discussed, a regular polygon interior angle will be what? The total of all the angles will be n minus 2 into 180 degrees. So let's take 5 sided or a pentagon. So 5 minus 2 which is 3 into 180 is 540 degrees. So sum of all the angles of a pentagon is 540 degrees. Now if we have a regular pentagon, it should be all equal. So 540 divided by 5, 5 are the total number of angles. So 108 degree will be a regular angle of a regular polygon or a regular pentagon. What is an external angle? Now in this case, an external angle will be you extend any line. What is the angle formed on the outer side is called an external angle or an exterior angle. Now in a regular polygon, an exterior angle will be nothing but 360 degrees divided by the total number of sides. Now in a pentagon, it will be 360 divided by 5. So it will be 72 degrees. Let's have a look at another thing. What are the total number of diagonals in a polygon? Now that is nothing but NC2 minus N. Now in case of a triangle, there is no diagonal possible. So it will be what? 3 minus 3 equal to 0. So in case of a square, 4C2 minus N. So 4C2 will give me nothing but 6 minus N, which is 4. So a total number of diagonals in a square is 2. This is how we can calculate the total number of diagonals in any of the polygons. Let's start with some examples. Now let's have a look at quadrilaterals. What are quadrilaterals? Okay, polygons with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Let's start from the roughest one, which has no side equal, no side parallel, no relation between any sides. So four sides completely independent of each other. Let's polish it. Let's make two sides parallel. So what does it become? A trapezium. So two sides are parallel. I don't have any relationship with the lengths. And the other two sides, again, we don't know. They might be parallel, might be equal, might be anything. So when we know that only two sides are parallel, it is called a trapezium. Let's polish it further. Let's make the other two sides also parallel. So the opposite sides are parallel, both the opposite pairs. This, it, this makes it a parallelogram. Now the beauty of a parallelogram is the moment you make the other two sides parallel, the opposite sides also become equal. Now the moment opposite sides become equal and parallel, then the opposite angles also become equal. So the opposite angles in this case will be also equal. So A, angle A, angle D will be same, angle B, angle C will be same. Let's polish it further. Now there are two options here. Either we make all the sides equal with the same criteria. So opposite sides are parallel and all the sides are equal. This makes it a rhombus. If we take it the other way around, we don't make the opposite sides equal. Whereas we make all the angles equal. 
So the moment the angles become equal, which means it has to be 90 degrees, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are equal, and all the angles are equal, which means that it will become a rectangle. Let's move ahead. Square. Now, if we try to make all the sides equal in case of a rectangle, or if you try to make all the angles equal in case of a rhombus, both of them result to a square. Now, a square is a regular quadrilateral. All angles equal, all sides equal, opposite sides parallel to each other. Let's have a look at how do they stack up in terms of formulas. Now, there are two things, area and perimeter. Now, area, let's start from square. All sides are equal, so area is nothing but A into A, which is A square. What is the perimeter? Sum of all the sides, which is same, so it will be 4A. What happens to a rectangle? Now, area is L into B, because L is different and B is different. And perimeter, it is nothing but 2L plus 2B. What happens to a parallelogram? We have to find out height in this case. Now, height into base. So, that will give you the area. Perimeter, 2L plus 2B. For a rhombus, the perimeter will be nothing but 4 times the side, because all sides are equal. But for the area, again, we'll have to find the height. So, height into base will give us the area of the rhombus. What happens to a trapezium? The height has to be found out, but the parallel sides are a bigger problem. So, we'll have to find out the average parallel side, which is nothing but sum of the two parallel sides divided by 2 multiplied by the height. This will give you the area of a trapezium. Let's look at the first problem. In the following figure, the area of isosceles right triangle ABE is 7 square centimeter. If EC equal to 3BE, then the area of the rectangle is... Now, let's have a look at the figure. Triangle ABE, which is a right angle triangle. So, the area will be what? Half into base into height. Height will be same for rectangle. The base, this is BE. We know that EC is equal to 3 times BE. So, the entire base will become 4 times BE. So, area will automatically become 4 times. But triangle has a half in it, a rectangle does not. So, the area will become 8 times. So, earlier it was 7 square centimeter for the triangle. For the rectangle, it will become 8 times, which is 56. So, that is the area of the rectangle. Let's have a look at another example. PQRS is an isosceles trapezium whose parallel sides are 52 centimeter and 20 centimeter. And the diagonal and one lateral side are mutually perpendicular. The area of the trapezium in square centimeters is... Now, let's have a look. Isosceles trapezium. This is nothing but two non-parallel sides to be equal. So, let's redraw it and drop two perpendiculars from the smaller sides. So, that is SR, two perpendiculars on the parallel sides, which is PQ, so which is T and U. So, the moment we do that, we find that TU becomes 20 because SR is 20. The other two sides, because of the isosceles trapezium, become 16 each. So, ST square. Now, let's go back to perpendiculars. In a right angle triangle, we have a for formula wherein the perpendicular is equal to the product of the opposite side split, which is nothing but ST square is equal to PT into TQ. So, ST square is 16 into 36, which is nothing but 24 square. Now, let's come to the area of the trapezium. Half into sum of parallel sides into the perpendicular distance. So, which is half into 52 plus 20 is 72 into 24, which is 864. So, this is the area of the trapezium. Let's look at another question. In the adjoining figure, AC plus AB is equal to 5AD and AC minus AD equal to 8. Then the area of the rectangle ABCD is... Now, let's say AB, the larger side, let us assume to be A. BC, the smaller side, let it be B. So, AC plus AB equal to 5AD, which is nothing but AC plus A equal to 5B. Let's look at the second one. AC minus AD equal to 8, which is nothing but AC equal to B plus 8. Now, we have two equations here. On solving, we can get, okay, A plus 8 equal to 4B. Let's look at the other side. Let's use the Pythagoras theorem now. So, AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. That will give me what? A square plus B square equal to B plus 8 whole square. That will reduce to A square equal to 16B plus 64. Now, upon putting the first equation and the second equation, we can, we can easily get that B is equal to 0 or 5. Now, 0 is not possible. So, 5 will be the only option and A is equal to 12. So, we can say that the area of the rectangle is 5 into 12, which is nothing but 60. Let's take another one. A parallelogram with the perimeter of 44 cm is divided by the diagonals into 4 triangles. The difference between the perimeters of the two adjacent triangles is 6 cm. Find the lengths of the sides of the parallelogram. Let's draw the diagram first. 
ABDC is the parallelogram. The diagonals are intersecting at O. So AD and BC are the two diagonals. So let's say AB plus BD plus CD plus AC is equal to what? 44. Now in this case, AB which is one side, let it be A. AC which is the other side, let it be B. So 2A plus 2B is equal to what? 44. So A plus B is nothing but 22. Now let's look at the individual triangles that we were talking about. So let's take the first triangle AB, BO and OA, the three sides of the first triangle. Let's look at second one, OC, CA, AO, so second triangle. Let's subtract the two. So AB plus OA plus OB minus whole thing AC plus OA plus OC. So this should give me six. That is in cancelling out everything, we'll get A minus B equal to six. So we know that A plus B is 22, A minus B is six. So we get that A is equal to 14 and B equal to eight. So we get the answer that the size of the parallelogram are 14 and 8. Using the same principles of parallelograms, of quadrilaterals, of triangles, we can solve a lot more questions of polygons as well as quadrilaterals.